In this video, we're going to take a look at Reason's Maelstrom Synthesizer. Now we can access the Maelstrom by coming to Instruments, scrolling down, and then dragging into our rack. Now the Maelstrom is a polyphonic synthesizer that makes use of grain table synthesis, which is a combination of granular synthesis and wavetable synthesis. Maelstrom's oscillators play back sampled sounds, which have been cut up into a number of grains, and this is what allows us to tweak those sounds. Now, if we don't make any adjustments to them, then the samples play back as normal sounds, so to speak, and it will become a bit more clear once we start working with the synth synthesizer and its oscillators. So by default, we have this Vesper loaded, and uh, let's just take a quick look at loading patches in case you're new to Reason and new, new to Maelstrom. Uh, we can click on this display here and then choose from these other patches as well. These just correspond to the loose patches, so to speak, in the browser over here. If I were to then come into pads and then choose this first airy additive and then click the display, you see we have this more selections here and that again corresponds to the folder we're in which is pads we could also grab a patch and drag that in and load a mouse from in that way as well but i'm just going to select that and delete it out come back to our first instance here and what i'm going to do is right click and reset this device so we can start off with an initialized patch and it's basically one uh one oscillator and it's a sine wave. I'm going to close out the browser. Now there are several main areas within Maelstrom. It probably looks like there's a lot going on if you're this is your first time using it and you're not familiar with the device or reason itself but we're going to break this down and hopefully by the end of the video it will be more clear. To the left here we have our play controls. Uh, we then have two modulators up top, two oscillators in the center area, we have a shaper for our sound and two filters, filter envelope and our volume and spread. And we're just going to cover these section by section. In part one, we're going to cover the uh, play controls, our two modulators and the oscillators. In part two, we'll take a look at the other areas here. So let's just get started with the play controls. Now, as I mentioned, Maelstrom is a polyphonic synthesizer. We can have up to 16 voices and we can adjust that by using these dials here. By default, we start off with eight. Now, next to the uh, polyphony control, we have legato, and by default, that is off. And if I play our initialized patch and hold down a key and then press another key while still holding, then we've got all of the voices playing back at the same time. If I were to turn on the legato then, and I'll press a key, and then while holding and press another one, we then switch to a monophonic mode. And we can use this portamento dial to introduce kind of a glide when we're changing our notes. So if I raise this up, having it all the way to the left, it is not active. But if I move this up, you're going to hear this glide uh, that is introduced. So I'm holding down all of these keys that, that I've just played. But we're, only, we're in monophonic mode again because we have legato turned on. And we now have that glide that's being introduced. And we can raise that up even further. Now, even if we have legato turned off, but we have our portamento up, this is still going to have an effect, uh, even if we have multiple voices uh, being triggered. And I'll just go ahead and turn that all the way to the left to make that inactive. And now we're back to uh, that initial uh, behavior that we had before using these controls. Next we have velocity and we can use this to however hard a software we're playing are uh, the keys on our external MIDI controller we can use that to affect 
the volume, the level of oscillator A and B. Now, if you notice here, we have a mode switch where we can switch to have it only affect oscillator A or only affect oscillator B, or by default, it's set to the center where it will affect both. So if I turn LVLA to the right, then this basically increases the sensitivity. And if I play softly and then increase the velocity or how hard I'm playing, we have a full range of velocity. In its default position in the center, no matter how hard or soft I play, we're always gonna have full velocity. Now, if I move to the left, the softer I play, the louder it's gonna be. And then the harder I play, see I'm pressing as hard as I can on the keyboard controller and we ha have a softer signal, uh, less amplitude. So that controls oscillator A, this one controls oscillator B. We can also use this dial to control how our velocity information from our external controller is affecting our filter envelope here. And we'll take a closer look at that when we move to this section. Now below that we have attack, shift, and mod. And similar to these controls above, we can use these dials, these parameters, to control how our velocity information is affecting our attack, our shift, and mod. The shift and mod correspond to shift here within our oscillator and our modulation above. Below that we have our mod wheel and we can assign these parameters to be controlled whenever we are using the mod wheel. So if I want the index to be affected, the index is this control here and we'll go into a description of that in a second. But if I'd like to control that with uh, the mod wheel, then I can move this to the right and then play. And with the sign, it's not gonna do too much of anything. If I were to change this to a different sound here, Let's actually increase the effect of that just to make it very clear. So just know that we can use these to adjust how our mod wheel is affecting these different parameters. Now let's jump into the oscillators here. You can see I clicked on this display and here we have a range of different sounds that we can choose from and they're all grouped by type essentially. So we have bass, effects, guitar, miscellaneous, percussion, and this just goes on synth, voice, wave. So we can choose from any of these sounds for uh, both of our oscillators. And I'll just keep it on this acoustic guitar slab. We can also use these controls here to navigate one by one up or down, but in my experience it's usually a bit quicker if you want to just open up the menu here and then select a sound that way. Now our index basically controls the where we start, where we begin playback of that sound once we press a key on the keyboard of the sound that we've chosen. So with the guitar slap, that's our full sound. If I want to start further back within that sound, then I would move this to the right. You can hear we lose that initial slap. It's almost similar to uh, change adjusting the attack. So that's that's what the index is. Now the motion controls the playback uh, of the sound. So if we move to the right, then we're going to increase the sp uh, the speed of the playback. To the left, we're gonna slow it down. Now, if I move this completely to the left, then we're just gonna play one grain, one sample of that sound. And that is the motion. 
Next we have shift, and this is basically gonna adjust the pitch of the sound. So as I move to the right, we raise the pitch. To the left, we decrease the pitch. Now we also have uh, octave control here. And with the octave, we have a range of eight octaves. And then we have semitones here, zero to 12. And then we have send. Immediately to the right, we have our, these familiar controls, ADSR, where we can control the attack, decay, sustain, and release. And then now that we know what all of these controls are, we essentially know what oscillator has available to us. And we can make adjustments. This is how we start to create our sounds and, and come up with different patches by adjusting these different parameters. So if I say, let's just do a brief example of creating a little patch here. If I lower the octave, maybe I want to take that pitch down a bit. Slow the motion down. I'll increase the attack to make it more like a pad. Now oscillator B is going to be turned off by default. We can activate and deactivate these aux oscillators by clicking this lead here. And let's come in and choose a different sound. What do I want to choose? I'll choose this uh, finger symbol. And I definitely want to lower that. the pitch, remove the shift, basically adjust the pitch. I'll raise the decay. Now I'll uh, raise the release on here to make it even more like a pad. Now if I were to open up the browser here and come to effects and let's bring in a reverb, take that down a bit. I'll choose the film score. And we're on our way to starting with a basic pad here. And so this is how these controls will allow you to kind of create the sound that you have in your head that you want to get out. Now I'm going to go ahead and bypass that reverb for now. And we can go even deeper into controlling our sound by coming up to the two modulators here. Um, so basically these displays will show what sort of modulation we have. Right now we have a sign. And we can choose different types of modulation by clicking these controls here. I'll just come back down to the simple sine wave here. And then the dials below, we have rate. So the rate of modulation that we're going to apply to our oscillator. And then we have where we can send this modulation to. So if I want to adjust the pitch or modulate the pitch, then I would use this dial and let's go ahead and activate that. In the center position, it is not active for any parameter. So if I want to modulate the pitch, I'll turn that up a bit. Let's try out a square wave and see. Turn up the rate.
and I'm actually going to take the attack down and the release. <laughs> Okay, and then remember our index is basically where we start playback of our sample. So if we introduce some modulation to the index, we are going to get a different sort of sound. And then our shift here, remember, kind of affects the pitch of our sound. So let's introduce some of that. And again, we have this uh, switch here where we can just have it affect oscillator A. Or B. Now we also have a sync button here where we can sync to our uh, song tempo. So if I activate sync, then the rate will switch then to uh, we can have three eight, uh, three eight quarter notes, eighth note, and so on. Now we also have a one shot here, which will basically turn this modulator into a one shot, an envelope. Uh, for, for our modulation. Now with modulator B, we have a couple of different options here. Now we can affect the, actually I'll control click and put that shift back. We can control the motion which remember motion determines how the sample is going to play back. We're going backwards here when we're going to the left, moving, turning to the right plays forward. So we can adjust that motion with modulator B. We can control the volume. Let's try out that. And we can control the filter. And we can also introduce some modulation to modulation A by using this one here. We again have this switch for allowing these parameters to affect both oscillator A and B, or we can just choose one or the other. And like modulator A, we have a sync and one shot setting as well. We can also come in and choose from a variety of different modulation waveforms here and there's just a there's a ton of them so the really the best way to experiment with with this is to go through uh and just try each one and experiment and see what you get sonically so i think we'll leave off for there in part one in part two we'll move on to the shaper uh the filter the filter envelope volume and spread and maybe take a look at some of these other features in more depth that we briefly touched on and how they relate to this section over here.